Good day, Paul Harvey fans. Snow is something we rarely get here in North Louisiana. If we do get snow, it usually only lasts a day or two, and it's so thin that skiing would be almost impossible. I've never seen anyone try to snow ski in Louisiana. In Switzerland, however, the snow can be measured in feet rather than inches. To tell you about a certain snowy adventure, here's Paul Harvey. The rest of the story. The three adventurers set out on their journey in the violet darkness before dawn, beneath a huge pale moon, icy white stars, and everywhere, everywhere, everywhere was snow. The village of Davos itself was some 5,000 feet in these mountains, fast disappearing behind the travelers. Two brothers named Branger, natives of Davos, and a third, a foreigner named Arthur. He was why they were making this historic attempt to traverse the 12 treacherous miles across the Furka Pass to the village of Rosa on skis. Never done before? No, sir. Never done before. And it might have remained undone to this day, except for the rest of the story. Arthur and Louise had the kind of happiness together that seemed unshakable, invincible. But then Louise became seriously ill, tuberculosis, the virulent type sometimes called galloping consumption. The doctors they consulted rendered the same grim prognosis. Louise's condition would grow steadily worse, and within a few months at most, she would be dead. Well, promptly, Arthur, a medical doctor himself, nonetheless indulged what colleagues today call denial. Louise was not going to die, he said. What his wife needed, he decided, was fresh mountain air. So the couple abandoned their new big city home. They packed up their belongings and their two small children. They headed for the mountains. When the family arrived in the snowy village of Davos in December of 1893, Arthur was concerned with one thing only, Louise's health. But as her condition quickly, dramatically, almost miraculously began to improve in the high, dry atmosphere, the good doctor, greatly relieved, began looking around him. And what amazed him was this little community's utter isolation. There was another village only 12 miles away, for instance, the town of Arosa. And yet such was the steep, snow-engulfed terrain between here and there that Arosa might as well have been on another planet. And that is when Arthur, an expert skier, made up his mind to demonstrate for the local villagers how they might better visit their neighbors. Accompanied by the athletic brothers Brunger, whom he had instructed in the use of Norwegian skis, Arthur glided out of Davos at 4.31 morning in late March 1894. Three hours later, the sun rose over the distant peaks, turning the night to gleaming white. Sometimes they shuffled sideways along the mountain face, where one careless move might send them plummeting a thousand feet. Other times they soared down the valley slopes with the thin, brittle air singing in their ears. Just past 11 o'clock, the townspeople of Arosa, searching the distance with binoculars, caught sight of the wayfarers skimming over the last precipice high above the fir tree forest. And as their incredible seven-hour expedition drew to a close, the villagers greeted them with cheers and backslaps and well-dones. As for Arthur's death-sentenced wife, Louise, the change of environment supplemented with megadoses of love kept her alive and thriving for a dozen years more. But something else wonderful came from their therapeutic trips to the mountains. For the people of that region, once snowbound to their villages, were liberated by a daring sportsman named Arthur who introduced their country to skis. Do I mean to say that doctor turned writer Arthur, Arthur Conan Doyle, the creator of the world's most famous fictional detective Sherlock Holmes, that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle introduced skiing to Switzerland? <laughs> that is precisely what I mean to say. That is indeed the rest of the story. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was a problem solver. His Sherlock Holmes novels are based on solving problems. For Doyle, the use of skis was, as Sherlock Holmes would say, elementary, my dear Watson. Now, if you'll forgive my poor British accent. Thank you for listening. I'm Brad Dyson, as Paul Harvey would say. Good day.